Hello chemists and welcome back to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode, we're gonna look at how to work with the ideal gas equation so that you can calculate the number of miles of gas present at different temperatures and pressures. This is AQA specification 1.2, the amount of substance, and appears on both papers one and two of your final A-level exams. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below. Amadeo Avogadro, who you might be familiar for the constant which is named after him, discovered that one mole of gas at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals would occupy 24 decimeters cubed. This gives us the simplest relationship of moles linked to the volume of a gas. This means that the type of gas does not have an impact on how much volume the gas occupies. So one mole of carbon dioxide occupies the same volume as one mole of chlorine, which has the same volume as one mole of nitrogen dioxide. This is true for all gases. So if the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 100 kilopascals, then the number of moles can easily be calculated by dividing the volume of gas in decimeters by 24 to give the total number of moles of the gas present. This is particularly useful to remember if you're looking at the multiple choice questions at the end of paper three. Using this information to make approximations can speed up finding the answer. Now this gas law is great if you're dealing with situations at standard temperature and pressure, but most chemical systems do not exist under these conditions. We usually see changes in temperature and pressure of the system. This is where the ideal gas equation comes in, PV equals NRT. Pressure is represented by P, volume is shown as V, the number of moles is N, the ideal gas constant is R, and temperature is T. When using the ideal gas equation, it's important to make sure that your values are in the correct units. Pressure must be in pascals, volume is in meters cubed, moles will of course be in moles, and the ideal gas constant, which is 8.31 and is always given to you in exams, has the unit of joules per mole per kelvin. The temperature must be in Kelvin. When it comes to looking at exam questions, we often have to carry out unit conversions. For pressure, we often have to convert from kilopascals to pascals, and we do this by multiplying by a thousand. For volume, which needs to be in meters cubed, but often provided in centimeters cubed or decimeters cubed, it can be easier to remember the conversion as two steps. Divide by a thousand to go from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed, and then divide by a thousand again to go from decimeters cubed to meters cubed or if you prefer, go directly and divide by 10 to the power of six. And finally for temperature, which must always be in Kelvin, we often have to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, and to do that, we add 273. Rearranging the PV equals NRT equation can be quite tricky, but we need to be able to confidently rearrange it to get volume, pressure, number of moles, and temperature. We'll take, now take a look at this example. A gas occupies 500 centimeters cubed at a pressure of 40 kilopascals and a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Calculate the number of moles present. Now this question needs to be split into three sections. First, we'll convert all the values to the correct units. Then we'll rearrange the equation to give the correct subject. And finally, we'll add in the values and solve the equation. First up, when it comes to converting all the correct values, first of all, I like to list out the values from the question. So I'll find pressure as 40 kilopascals. I'll find the volume to 500 centimeters cubed and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. I'll then carry out the unit conversions, showing that I've converted 40 kilopascals to 40,000 pascals, volume down to 0 0.0005 meters cubed, and temperature to 288 Kelvin. I make this really clear for the examiner because this often is awarded marks. Next, I'll rearrange the equation to give the correct subject. So I'll start off by writing out our equation, PV equals NRT, and then the rearranged form, N equals PV over RT. And in the final step, I'll substitute all my converted values into the equation and solve it to get 8.35 times 10 to the minus three moles. So to summarize what we've learned about the ideal gas equation then, one mole of gas will always occupy 24 decimeters cubed at standard temperature and pressure. This is a real quick one for multiple choice questions and short answer questions. PV equals NRT can be used when conditions are not standard. Pressure must always be in pascals. Volume must always be in meters cubed. R is the ideal gas constant and it's 8.31 joules per mole per Kelvin. And temperature must always be in Kelvin. Well, chemists, that's it for this episode. If you found it useful, please hit the thumbs up below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more videos coming out in the future. And thank you for taking the time to watch.